Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is Father's Day, June the 16th, 2019. Let me just say by now, uh, many of you probably have received a new shaving kit, a new tie, perhaps a gift certificate to your wife's favorite restaurant. In any event, happy Father's Day. I'm literally just back from being treated to breakfast. What better time than now to talk about heavyweight boxing? Let's talk about Tyson Fury against Tom Schwartz. You know, there's a seminal moment in this fight. Tom Schwartz, who has a punch and whose dream is to be heavyweight champion, has Tyson Fury where he wants him up against the ropes. Schwartz is not going to let this moment pass. So he throws a series of hooks with both hands. Right? Fury up against the ropes. All six, eight or six, nine of him decides not to clinch. Fury decides not to throw punches. Instead, with this desperate young lion, with the chance for a career highlight in front of him, Fury decides to use his upper body to dodge the punches. Right? He starts turning his upper body. He starts making Schwartz miss. At that moment, it's literally at that moment when you see a big guy bouncing, right, going like this, has a hand up, is twisting, right, is reading the shots coming and is moving his upper body. It's at that moment that you realize you're not watching Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua. Right, this is big. But it's not big and clunky. Right? You understand that this is different. Let me just make a few observations here, a few critiques. Now, Fury's left jab from an orthodox stance is much better at this stage of his comeback than his right jab from a southpaw stance. In other words, he's not quite back to where he was when he went southpaw against Kevin Johnson several years ago. In other words, Fury is still shaking off the rust. He's still getting back to where he once was. Also, he starts out here on his back foot to set up his front foot. Right? At this stage of his comeback, He's not quite ready to take the lead on his front foot unless his opponent is hurt. Right? When Schwartz is hurt, then Fury, of course, is on his front foot and has Schwartz up on the ropes. But before then, you notice Fury always starts out on his back foot. Right? He's always, you know, backing up, shooting a jab, looking at you, moving away from you. In sum, Tyson Fury is still getting back to who he once was. The Tyson Fury you're seeing now is not peak Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong, he's much better than he was when he started his comeback. He's much better than he was when he fought Deontay Wilder. But he's not quite where he was at his best. But make no mistake, as you watch Tyson Fury be a showman, right, at times he's a court jester, like Ali was, like Chris Eubank Sr. was, like Jorge Pius was, right, all excellent boxers. Just understand that you're also watching a very 
real fighter, a true champion. Let me just say this. This fight against Tom Schwartz, which is must-see, featured Fury fighting orthodox behind an excellent jab with movement on his back foot while throwing straight right hands. It featured Fury fighting Southpaw, throwing a right jab and also throwing left straight hands. Right? It featured him using his upper body to dodge punches. Right? He didn't want to throw back. That gives the opponent an opportunity to counter. He didn't want to try to clinch his opponent. Look like he's in trouble. No, he lets the action unfold because he makes a decision that if this fight is fought at a certain pace, he has the upper hand and he was right. Right? Let me just say the fight also featured him getting the KO and it's a dramatic KO. You know before the last flurry that Schwartz is hurt. You know Schwartz's nose is likely broken. You understand as Fury faces him Fury has a lot of punches he could throw in his tool shed. Fury throws a pretty good uppercut. Fury throws excellent shots to the body. Fury show, throws excellent hooks up top. And you saw all of this in less than two full rounds. Right? So make no mistake, from this seat, the best heavyweight out there is Tyson Fury. Right? I'm expecting Tyson Fury to if the fight happens and it might not because of Luis Ortiz but if the fight happens I'm expecting Fury to beat Deontay Wilder let me just say too you see Fury's back foot game and you realize that that level of back foot is something that Wilder in his 30s can't develop that Anthony Joshua at this stage is just not coordinated enough to develop. Right? Life is unfair. You could literally leave the sport for two years, come back, shake off the rust in a few fights, and suddenly find yourself the best heavyweight on the planet. Now I will agree that I feel the more agile guys will give him trouble. Right? Not Dylan White, but Alexander Usyk. I'll agree there's a certain type of fighter who might be able to track him down. Tom Schwartz didn't have the foot speed. Marat Gassiev does. Let me say this too, just in terms of talking boxing. When Tom Schwartz gets Tyson Fury up against the ropes and Fury's high risk right anytime your defense consists of just moving your upper body you're at risk of your opponent timing a punch just right let's invent a word here what Tom Schwartz should have done is stutter a punch right rather than go hook 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 where Fury figures out the timing and is doing a dodge, dodge, dodge. Rather than do that, what Tom Schwartz should have done is either hook, fake a right hand, wait for Fury to move out of the way. Then as Fury comes back, throw the real right hand. Right? Stutter the punch. Or, better yet, double and triple one of the punches. In other words, you're more predictable when you go left, right, left, right, than if you go left, left, right, right, right. Have the opponent guessing. Now Tom Schwartz unbeaten coming in, but the level of his competition wasn't highly ranked. Right, Tom? Schwartz will be back. He's in his mid-twenties. He's going to look at the film and he's going to say, okay, so that's what I did wrong. He's going to realize 
you don't want to have your back up against the ropes against Tyson Fury. Right? Because Fury has a front foot game. He's just getting it back now. Right? Fury actually is a bit of a closer if you follow his past. Right? So Schwartz will be back when he learns a few things. Understand, many of the guys at heavyweight are very experienced fighters. Usyk is in his 30s. Right? I know Andy Ruiz is viewed as, you know, the new kid on the block. Andy Ruiz is actually an older kid on the block, right? He's late 20s, early 30s. Right? Um, has been fighting an awfully long time. Understand, in terms of Olympic experience, right? Usyk, gold medal, uh, Andy Ruiz, Mexican Olympic team. The guys at heavy, and I suspect they're going to be others, right? Uh, Maris Bredis eventually is going to get back to the heavyweight division. Right? I believe uh, Dordicos, 6'3", Dordicos, with a big punch. A guy who has to lose weight to make 200. Right? At 33, there's going to come a time where he enters the heavyweight division. So you're going to have guys with more experience than Tom Schwartz. Hoping to get Tyson Fury in exactly the position Tyson Fury was when Fury delivered his signature defensive moves against Tom Schwartz. Only these guys are going to know how to set it up a little bit better. They're going to understand that Fury might not clinch them. That Fury might not throw punches back. That Fury might actually try to do some defensive moves to dampen their offense. And one of these older fighters who's been around is going to know how to set it up a little bit better. Right? I believe every man is mortal. Every man can be beaten. Father time waits for no one. But with all of that said, let me just say, Tyson Fury today, a fighter shaking off the rust, a fighter who I don't think is all the way back from where he was, is the best heavyweight of all heavyweights with a belt. Right? You're looking at rare talent. As I said before, too, there's a Vladimir Klitschko jab where the guy is flat footed. And then there's a Tyson Fury jab, an Ali jab, where the fighter can actually move and throw a stiff jab while he's on the move. Right? They're guys who can own the pocket. And then there are guys who actually have a back foot, who can back away from the pocket, but when you try to jump on them, they're actually offensive. Right? At one point in this fight, during an ambidextrous Tyson Fury fight, where he comes out righty the first round, comes out lefty the second round, they showed Terrence Crawford in the crowd. When they showed Crawford, I smiled because I thought, you know, Tyson Fury is really the 6'8", 6'9", version of Terrence Crawford. Right? Fighters who have studied the sport, fighters who have different fight styles, who can fight you lefty or righty, who do things that look natural that, quite frankly, are special in their division. Right? Let's enjoy the Tyson Fury show. He comes in to James Brown, he's channeling Apollo Creed with the outfit and stuff like that. He's singing after the fight. Enjoy the show. Right? But just also understand, you're watching an elite heavyweight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me invite people into the conversation here. I know I've said some hard things about some fighters out there, right? Deontay Wilder. And I know, nothing proves the point better than success. And the Wilder people have a very compelling argument, don't they? Right? Unbeaten. When they fought Tyson Fury, they knocked him down twice. Right? I understand that. Let me hear from you. Tell us in the comment section of this video why you feel Deontay Wilder wins the rematch. 
right? I'm just telling you, you look at Tyson Fury. He's lost weight. He looks sharper. He's up on his toes more. He's putting his punches together, together better, right? As you look at Tyson Fury shake off the rust, I'd like to know from the Deontay Wilder crowd why they think Wilder goes 12 rounds with Tyson Fury. I'm not sure if he does. Let me hear from you. Let's have the discussion. Happy Father's Day. Thanks for stopping by.